Hello all, in this video, we will see how to configure the STM32WP55 board and um, connect it to the STM toolbox that is uh, uh, the mobile app that is present um, and in the <coughs> Android Play Store and we will try to see whether it is connecting or not so for this uh, uh, we have already generated a code so we'll explain how uh, to start with it so basically when you when you start uh, we go to file new and then we start we say stm32 project right so once you have this generated okay you will have um, uh, to select the appropriate <coughs> controller here stm32 wb55 whatever okay let us take uh, um, cgu6 so you can see here it is on the dongle so we will not take cgr cv6 our cv6 is also not part of uh, um, the stm32 rgv6 yes so you can see here the board is also detected so we, we selected the right uh, part number so click on it and click next okay so you give your project name uh, and uh, <coughs> you can say ble advertising for example okay and we will try to uh, click finish which actually opens up uh, the cube mx part Okay, once you create your project, we'll land up on this page. Okay, let us try to pull this. Now, in this page, okay, so you see here, we have um, the, the IO configuration file. Uh, which is present so here we have to do several things so what are the few things that need to be done let us first try to point out first thing for the um, stm32 to, to run we need clock to be supplied to the cores there are two uh, cores right one one is in the rf first section and the other one, uh, the ARM core, um, is in the MCU section, right? So, these two cores are need to be supplied with the proper uh, clock. And the clock that we are going to use in this will be 32 MHz. That is first thing. And second thing, um, we also need to have 32 kHz clock, which will be the clock for the um, sleep configurations as well and also it's the RTC clock so that is the second clock so we need to configure the clocks okay and we need to configure the RF output of this particular uh, STM32 so that we we activate the RF1 so um, that is second thing and if you want logs on your we have to configure the uh, use output port accordingly so these are all the set of things which need to be done. Let us try to start with that. First, let us start with system core. So, as we know, um, in the STM32, let us try to open the uh, block diagram. So, in STM32, let us uh, search for IPCC, which gives us the block diagram. Okay, you can see here, as we know, there are two cores, right? Uh, this is uh, related to our section and this is related to the, um, <coughs> the MCU section. So, these two uh, are communicating via the HB bus, right? And then, when you want the peripherals to be synced between these two, you, you, you have uh, the interprocessor uh, communication and then uh, the SEMA force which need to be enabled. So, these are the two major things which need to be enabled if we are working on uh, <coughs> the STM32 um, uh, cores. So, that means go to the 
SPCA mode and uh, click on activate it. You need not do anything other than this. Okay, and then um, you ensure that the global interrupt is enabled. And uh, in the NVIC settings, um, and then go to IPCC again, click on activated. So these two are the major things. And then this is the RCC. This RCC mode mode to be enabled. And if we go to the data sheet, um, this is the reset and uh, uh, clock controller which uh, needed to be uh, <coughs> enabled. So, if we go, RCC is enabled and in this mode, right, uh, the um, clocks are basically a high speed clock is set to crystal ceramic resonator which is externally connected and also low speed clock is connected externally. So, these two are enabled and <coughs> which are to be used in the uh, board. So, okay. If you scroll down below, we can also see that the voltage and other parameters and we need not uh, enable any of this. Okay. And then go to SIS. So here, SIS mode, uh, we actually, uh, the debug is disabled. If you want, we can enable the debug as well. For now, um, everything is disabled here. <coughs> And this comes default uh, configuration with uh, once you open the dot IOC. So these parameters you can leave as is. In the analog section, we will not be using uh, any analog related things here. So you can ignore this. And if you go to the timer, so as we said, we will be using the RTC timer to give out uh, the <coughs> timing uh, when you. Uh, generate the data uh, out of the BLA. So here you have to activate the clock source, okay? And the configuration, you can see uh, the wake up interrupts are to be enabled in the um, interrupt vector settings, okay? And then timer is done. Now connectivity. So connectivity wise, as we have mentioned, um, when you want to connect uh, the RF output of uh, the <coughs> to uh, respective uh, filter and antenna you need to activate rf1 pin so this is the pin which we will be using so click on activate here and then go to use at one so <clears throat> if you want the data out uh, you can configure uh, use at one so for now let us try to ignore this and then in the multimedia part, we are not using any LCD or anything. You can ignore in the security part again. For now, the intention is to connect the BLD. So let us ignore that. And then let us go to computing. Even that can be ignored. And the middleware. So this is the section where you will have all the um, BLE related configurations present. So first thing, you have to enable BLE here. Okay, and uh, once you enable BLE, go to the configuration. Okay, go to the configuration and you enable uh, hardware use at in case if you are using the UART. And <clears throat> if you want the debug trace to be used, you can enable the debug trace and um, and this particular uh, um, application parameters you can select hardware you are one if in case you want the data there okay uh, and apart from that no other configuration is required here you can use the uh, set the uh, leave the parameters as is and <clears throat> one thing what we need here is basically we want uh, to use the BLE application right so, uh, if you go here, BLE wireless stack is what we are going to use. The application type, it will be a server profile. And we actually, in the server profile, we don't want uh, um, the P2P server. We will enable the custom template. So, by custom template, we will be uh, configuring the um, settings as per our requirement. So, once this is done, okay, you will have... Um, the BLE advertising, BLE GAD um, enabled. So once you go to the BLE advertising, okay, in the BLE advertising, you we 
have to enable the uh, settings here okay by we'll scroll this see uh, we can enable any of these advertising you can enable tx power you can enable um, a complete local name anything can be enabled so for our uh, this one we have enabled the complete local name and uh, it is named as st-ble so whatever uh, we'll be advertising from this this is the name that will be seen in your mobile so uh, once that is done go to the ble get and uh, um, services you keep one number of services and log name you can service as per your requirement this is the uh, names that will be seen in the uh, ble services so name it accordingly um, the long name and the short name you can um, <coughs> name it as per your requirement and once you name it you see this tag coming up okay and again here you you rename it um, as per your requirement and with all this uh, the configuration uh, BLE application related settings advertising settings BLE get settings we are done with the configuration so the mobile uh, middleware settings are also done and uh, we can <coughs> go to the clock configuration so in the clock configuration uh, ensure that both the cores have 32 megahz here okay and we have 32 megahz which is uh, uh, divided by one to give 32 megahz here uh, to the cpu one and cpu two ensure that you have 32 megahz that is coming out of the max and you configure that <coughs> to the um external clock so this input frequency will be 32 um, mega edge and this is what we will be uh, inputting to the um muxes the system clock mux and which will be generating and here for the 32.768 uh, ensure that you select the external clock and also you have um same 32 kilohertz which is connected to the section let us just try to scroll to show here okay so the rf section uh, clock max has uh, lse connected rather than hsc so ensure this and in the project manager um, once you go uh, in the project you will have all the settings that are connected um, and in the tools you have nothing to do uh, this is already set up and once this is done um, you close the simple BLE IOC okay and you see uh, the code being generated uh, for the uh, BLE mode so here go to the main and you can see the initializations happening um, and <coughs> the process uh, uh, is running so now it is time to dump the code let us connect the board okay and let us you can see the board got detected and let us try to run it in the debug mode we are trying to dump the code because we have already compiled it so switch to the debug perspective okay okay and then let us try to run run it now you can open your uh, uh, bluetooth uh, um application from st and you can see whether st dash ble device is appearing a or not let us open the st ble toolbox once you open it wants to turn on the bluetooth let us turn on the bluetooth and also um, enable the location okay once it is enabled you can see uh, the device is appearing up our board is powered up and the device let us try to click on it and say connect okay you can see it got connected so uh, like now what we are doing is we are trying uh, the <coughs> rssi is around minus 55 dbm right uh, let us try to move the mobile far away and click on refresh you can go here as we go far rssi is reducing okay you can see now we are coming very near to the board and you can see the rssi improving so 
this is a simple application uh, which actually advertises and connects to the um, HTBLE app. You can also connect from any other BLE app and try to use it.